So today I'm going to show you how to use Google in order to do um, academic research. I'll show you the best way to search, we'll evaluate a website, and then we'll talk about citation. Remember a couple of weeks ago I said that less than 1% of everything on the web is found in Google. And when we talk about the free web, that's what we're referring to. We're talking about that 1%. The deep web refers to everything else. Everything that's locked behind passwords, search boxes, all those things are part of the deep web. Um, domain names are the endings in URLs. You're probably familiar with these, but let's talk about them for a minute. .com is for commercial websites. They're usually trying to sell you something. .org is for organizational websites. Often these are nonprofit, but not always. They could be trying to influence you towards a certain opinion. For example, the website autismspeaks.org is a nonprofit working to raise money for and awareness regarding autism issues. This is a good website to get some of your information from if you're doing something related to autism. But not all .org websites have such great purposes. For example, NRCC.org is a website for the National Republican Congressional Committee, which is a political committee devoted to increasing the Republican majority in the U.S. House of Representatives. Because that is their purpose, um, the information that they give you will probably be a bit skewed or biased towards the Republican way of thinking. The information they present you is going to be very pro-Republican and they're not going to show you anything that's pro-Democrat or maybe makes their position look bad. So while you can use information from this website, you do have to keep in mind how it might be a bit biased or skewed. .gov um, are government websites. Only government organizations can have this domain, so it's always trustworthy. .edu is for educational websites. These can only be used by higher education institutions. They are generally pretty trustworthy. There are some instances of students having personal web pages that are provided to them by um, their school. Um, so you want to be on the lookout for those because they're not necessarily the best um, resource for academic research. Um, but in general, .edu websites are, are good to use. And then .mil is for military websites. It can only be used by the military, so it's always trustworthy. So a few weeks ago, we talked about this graphic. We talked about how Google only searches the free web. Um, that's less than 1% of the Internet. We also talked about how Google misses the stuff that's the deep web, the stuff below those search engine results, databases, academic journals, etc. We've already talked about searching the deep web. You learn how to search in the catalog for books. Um, you learn how to search in our databases for articles um, and videos and other types of resources. All of these things are things that are not available through Google. But today we're going to talk about how you can find the best that's in that 1% of stuff, the stuff that is searchable and found in Google. So we'll start here in Google. Um, now, like the databases that we searched a couple weeks ago and last week, um, Google defaults to an AND search. That means it will look for all of your search terms unless you tell it differently. There are certain things that you can tell Google to do. For example, you can type in your search term, but if you want to search only certain domains, you'll type site, colon, and then whatever domain you want to search. So we're going to do .gov. So notice that this only brings back .gov websites. You can also do this with um, if you want to search a certain website, not a certain domain. So you type in autism site colon wikipedia.org. This only brings back Wikipedia resources. You'll see up here that there are uh, things that are not Wikipedia um, and over here as well. These are ads. These are not really part of your search results. People pay and do other special things to get these um, results up here in the ad section. So typically you want to ignore those. You can also remove certain terms from your search results. For example, 
If you uh, want to know more about a Jaguar but not the car, you want the animal, you can type in Jaguar and speed and then the minus sign in car. So you see this gets you things about the animal and this is some cartoon. Now this doesn't always work super perfectly. You still see cars here in the images results. Um, there's some things down here, but in general it does work decently. So it's a good thing to know about. You can also do this for websites. So um, I want to find information on pandas, but nothing from Wikipedia. So I did the minus sign, then site wikipedia.org. And you see all of my results are from things that are not Wikipedia. Wikipedia jumps up really high in the list often, so it's a good thing to know about. You can also um, do something that we did in the databases, and that's put quotation marks around search terms that are more than one word or a phrase. Um, so this will bring back things that have Jack Russell together, not something that has Jack and Russell somewhere on the page. You can also look for things that are not, like take that search term out. So I would do the minus sign and then my phrase in quotation marks. This doesn't bring anything because there are no, no pages like that. Um, but that's a good thing to know about. If you want to do an OR search like we did um, in the databases, you don't use the word OR. You use what's called the tilde, it's that little squiggly line, and then you put in your search term. So if you put in teenagers, this is going to find synonyms of the word teenagers. You'll see the first thing that pops up isn't even teenagers, it's adolescents. Um, then the next one, teenagers, then adolescents again. Um, down here at the bottom you have teenage rather than teenagers, so that's a nifty thing to know about. Another great um, way to search Google is the related search. If you find um, a website that just does exactly what you want it to do, it's the perfect resource, you can type in related colon and then that website. So this is going to show you websites that are related to the one you typed in. Um, you see autismsociety.org, Walk Now for Autism Speaks, you have the Wikipedia page, Research Autism. So that's a really, really nifty way to search um, if you find something that you really, really like and want to find other things like it. Um, remember that when you are doing these searches, you don't put a space between whatever you're telling the database to do and the, the search term. Make sure it's all um, just like one word, no spaces. So when you're evaluating the web, it's very, very important to um, remember the CRAP method. This is the most important thing you can do when you're doing research on the free web. So let's look at some of the most important parts of the CRAP method to think about when evaluating stuff from the web. Um, with currency, you want to know when it was published, and you want to make sure that the links are functional. If they're not, this kind of shows that nobody's keeping up with the page, um, nobody's updating it, and the information can be outdated. As far as relevance, you always want to make sure it um, helps you answer your research question. You also want to think about who the intended audience is and really think about if you've looked at multiple sources and decided this is the best one to use. For authority, you want to know who wrote the information, who's responsible for it. Um, in addition, you want to pay attention to the URL and see if there's anything that the URL tells you about the author or the source. This is where knowing about the domain names comes in handy. You really, really, really want to evaluate the accuracy well. This is how reliable or how truthful the information is. Um, is there any evidence of bias? That's very, very common on the free web. A lot of bias, a lot of emotion, things like that. And you want to make sure that the people making these claims have evidence to support those claims. And then finally, what's the purpose of it? Um, why does this information exist? What are they trying to convince you of? Is it propaganda? Is it fact? Is it opinion? Um, these are things that you really, really, really want to be careful about. So let's put this into practice. Let's look at a website um, and evaluate it using the CRAP method. I'm going to do a search for Martin Luther King Jr. And you see our search results that come up. Um, the first thing you see is a Wikipedia page. You see something from biography.com. You see um, a .org site and then another history.com and then some more .org sites. Um, all of these look pretty decent, um, just they passed the eye test initially. You do want to remember that the um, 
descriptions for these websites come from the websites themselves. You don't want to um, think that just because this website says the truth about Martin Luther King includes historical trivia articles and pictures, a valuable resource for teachers and students alike. Although um, that sounds good, you do want to remember that the website is providing this description, not some outside third party unbiased person who's evaluating this like you or I would. So let's look at this website. Um, there are a lot of things that stand out initially. First is this is a .org website. Often teachers, and instructors will tell their students they can use anything on a .org website. But remember we said earlier that .org doesn't necessarily mean the website is good or safe to use. You still have to evaluate it. Notice that the URL is not correct. We're um, researching Martin Luther King Jr. and while this is a website about Martin Luther King Jr., this URL says Martin Luther King. So that's a first red flag that the name of the website, the URL of the website, isn't even really correct. Um, you also want to just think about your first impressions of this website. It doesn't look that bad. It's not incredibly fancy or anything like that. Um, but it looks just like a normal website. Um, you want to think about the different things that you should look at in order to determine if this is a good website to use or not. You would want to look at these links here. You would want to ask yourself who's responsible for the content of this website. Um, I've looked around this website. Um, there are no um, pages that have any authors on them, but there is the person we would consider the publisher down here, Stormfront. You want to do some research on the publisher to make sure that they are um, good, reputable um, people. Um, if you did some research for Stormfront, what you would learn is that they are a white supremacist group. Um, so this is a hate site. But it doesn't necessarily appear that way in the beginning. There are some uh, disturbing things that you want to pay attention to. Just on this page, um, remember this is promoted as a website for students. It was promoted as a website for students back on the Google page. Um, but you have some rap lyrics and information on Kwanzaa, um, things that aren't necessarily related to Martin Luther King Jr. So that's the first red flag. Also, there are no dates on this website. We don't know when any of this information was published. We don't know if it's being updated. So that's another red flag. If you look at some of these links, you'll see some things that um, kind of are kind of disturbing. First, the historical writings link. Um, the link doesn't work. This takes you to the Internet Archive, the Wayback Machine, which um, shows you how the page used to look, but because the link doesn't work anymore, it shows you this. So that, that's a red flag. Also, if we go to the Suggested Books section, we'll see some information that gives us a little more um, detail about what the purpose of this website is. The first thing you'll see are some books. Um, if you look at the authors of these books, specifically David Duke, you'll learn that he is a white supremacist. He um, was and maybe still is pretty high up in the KKK organization. Um, and there's some disturbing things in the description of his the book that they're promoting here, such as where it says he is an activist for the rights and heritage of European Americans. Also, it um, points out that he won a landslide of white voters that's over 60% in um, several um, elections that he was a part of. Now, the reason why I know that he is a white supremacist is because I looked him up. I didn't know that before I looked at this website. So when you're evaluating websites, it might require some outside research to look at what some other people are doing, um, the things they're involved in, in order to decide if this is a good website or not to use. I also want to point out um, something he put on the Civil Rights Library page. He has this letter from the webmaster. Um, this is a, a letter that whoever wrote this page um, put together describing um, his opinion on civil rights and that it's an industry, um, it's something promoted by the mass media in order to brainwash Americans and censor information. This is an example of a website where you want to evaluate its accuracy. It says a lot of things that other websites are not saying and other resources are not saying. So that's the type of thing that you want to look for when you're evaluating the accuracy. Also notice down here where he talks about 
um, a lot of people are doing what you and I are doing right now, and that's evaluating this website and deciding that it's not good to use because it's a hate site. If someone puts this sort of thing on their website, it means they're getting a lot of feedback at, that they are a hate site. So this is very disturbing. It just proves without a doubt that this is not a good website to be using. Finally, um, to evaluate the, the accuracy of this website, we're going to look at this Kwanzaa information. Um, I did about two minutes of research into Kwanzaa and figured out that a lot of the information on this page is just really, really bad information. That's the type of thing that you want to be doing when you're evaluating this, these websites. If you find a page that maybe looks good initially but doesn't have a lot of the same information that's on other websites and in other resources that you found, that's a sign that it's a um, not a good resource to be using. Now, not every website is as blatantly bad as this one. Some will disguise it better. So you really want to pay attention um, and really be evaluating everything that you read. When you are just using books in the library or the databases provided by the library, um, you could generally trust what you were getting. Now you're being let loose on the web, and that's an entire different ballgame. You should spend a significant amount of time evaluating um, how good or bad these websites are. Use the CRAP method. Always, always, always ask your instructor or someone in the library if this website is good or bad if you're not sure. If something feels off or weird about a website, trust your gut and just go find something different. Most important thing to remember is that you should not ever blindly trust information that you find online. Always evaluate it. So now let's talk about how you cite on the web. Here on the left, you'll see a list of things that you need to look for in a citation. Sometimes um, not all this information will be available, but you do need to try to find it before you just skip it. Um, in the first citation, you'll notice a few things. First, there's no author. So that part is just skipped. That's very common on the web for there to not be an author. Um, finding someone that claims the work that they put on the web is always a good thing, but it's just very common for there to be no one. Um, so if there is no author, you just skip it. Next, you'll want to um, put the title of the article in quotation marks. Then you'll put the title of the website italicized. Next, you'll put the publisher of the information and then the date. If there is no date, you'll put ND like here. Finally, you'll put the medium of publication. Um, anything you get through Google is going to be web. And then the date that you access the material. Um, some instructors ask that you put the URL. Not all of them do. It's not required in MLA format. Um, but some people do still ask for it. For your next annotated bibliography, I do want the URL to be listed, and you'll just put it at the end. Notice in the second citation that the title of the website and the publisher are the same. You need to put them twice. Make sure that when you're putting the title of the website, it is italicized, and that's how you distinguish between the two. If there is no publisher for the information, then you would put NP, the same as when you put ND for no date. Um, do pay attention to how the dates are formatted. You'll put the day first and then the month shortened and then the year. And remember, you only use the URL if told to by your instructor. And I am telling you that I do want it used for this assignment, this next assignment. And as always, if you have any questions, use the MLA handbook to figure out any, any issues that you're having. So finally, your homework. You're going to do the same thing you've been doing all semester. You need to find five websites that help answer your research question. Um, you can use anything on the free web as long as you don't pay for it. It's something that is acceptable in academic research, and it's not from Wikipedia. Um, with Wikipedia, there are a lot of issues, some of them being that um, anyone can edit. They don't necessarily have to have the right qualifications in order to put information on that article. Um, so Wikipedia has a lot of issues that just make it not a good resource to use for academic research. It's a good starting place if you need to learn more about your topic, that's a good place to go, but it's not something you ever need to use or cite in your um, academic research. Make sure you put the URL at the end of your citation, and then you'll want to make sure you do um, your research journal, the 300 words explaining your process. For the five websites, 
any page on a website counts as one resource. That means if there are two different pages on one website that have good information that help answer your research question, um, that counts as two sources. You should use more than one website though. Aim to get two or three different websites um, and it's, then it's okay to use multiple pages within that website. If you have any questions, just let me know. Send me an email. Um, it's very, very, very important that you ask for help if you need it. There is a lot of really bad information on the web, so don't get a poor grade on this assignment because you didn't ask for help. One um, other thing that you need to do is to take the short quiz in Canvas on this video. Um, it's very, very short. It's just about five questions, um, and it, you'll easily be able to pass it if you watch this video. Um, so make sure that you do that. It'll be an easy grade for you. If you have any questions, let me know.